If you're tired of hearing the same old basic mindset and motivational fluff talk, you've come to the right show. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast where we dish on everything from managing that crazy brain of yours to manifesting abundance to my straightforward, actionable steps that will make you major money online. Now, I'm not your typical multimillionaire entrepreneur. It takes a small village to keep my anxiety and depression in check. I'm inherently disorganized with an intense obsession with office supplies. Your girl here is a digital marketing content expert who's generated over $200 million in sales. I promise by tuning in twice a week, you will get a much needed refreshing dose of truth, clarity, and cash making advice. Now let's get to it. What up, my posse, my people, my fellow crazies? I'm your host, Tiffany, and this is a real-time episode, meaning you are hearing what I'm going through in real time, so it's not going to be maybe as sharp, as eloquent, not that I'm, not that I'm eloquent, but it is going to be maybe a little all over the place and super vulnerable for me to do episodes in real time. This is why you rarely see anybody doing anything in fucking real time out there because it is vulnerable and it is messy. And of course, I want to stop and already re-record this and not do it in that way. But you need to hear what happened this morning because I know you go through this yourself. And the best way for you to really hear it and get it so that you can show up regardless is by you hearing me that I go through it. I go through it all the time versus me just telling you I go through it or two weeks ago on this day, this happened to me and now I have sunshine bursting out of my ass. I can't listen to those people. So I'm willing to be uncomfortable and share with you in real time so you can go, okay, I see what she means by showing up regardless. It's not fun. It's not ideal, but it's required. I woke up today just feeling like crap. I feel depleted. I feel depressed. I feel, I don't know, just I don't feel great. I am, I've been expending a lot. I've been doing a lot of emotional processing, trauma processing. This is 2022 has put me through the damn ringer. And you know how when you have a lot of stuff going on at once and you're juggling all these balls, there's almost like this adrenaline component. I call almost like a productivity high where you're like, well, I've got to do this with the kids and I've got to make sure I have this for my business. And now I have, you know, my aunt who's sick and I've got that, 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 that. And so you just, you keep going. You're almost on this autopilot, but there's even a little bit of a high because we've been programmed and most of us were taught that if you're productive, that means you're a good person. Productivity means you're successful. Productivity means you're a great member of society. Productivity means you're doing the damn thing. So then, right, we can get caught up in busy, tasking, doing this, that, this, and the other, because resting, God forbid we do that, resting, pulling back, slowing down, we were not taught that that's okay, most of us. Those of us who do it, we had to teach ourselves. We had to unlearn. We had to reprogram. But that still lives within us. So I've shared many times that I have an exercise addiction. It's something that is very well managed to this day. I have other issues that are much more of a struggle than that one, thank God, which is crazy that that's the case because it was wild before. Woke up, didn't want to get up, didn't want to go to yoga. Instantly, that inner critic, critical parent, ego, inner bully, whatever you want to call it, the bitch's name is Susie. Normally, I have her in the trunk. Sometimes on my good days, she's in the trunk and she's tied up in the trunk, right? When we're feeling good and we have energy, you know, we're on on vacay mode, Things are all going our way. It's it's not that hard to manage that 
crazy brain of ours. But it's when we're depleted, we're tired, we're under the weather, things don't seem to be working, we keep getting hit after hit after hit. Our defenses are down. We don't have as much energy or mental bandwidth. And then that that inner bully knows it. Susie knows it. She goes, it's time to make my break from this trunk. I can slide right into that front seat of that car and press on that gas full throttle, man. And of course she did. Susie's like, you better get your ass up. You need to go to yoga because next week's your big mastermind event. You're having a photo shoot there and you're going to look like a fat ass because you're already looking puffy. You better get up. Da, 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 da. That's my exercise addiction. It's at any time your brain is telling you something that puts you in a fear state, a panic state, an anxious state, a shame state, that's coming from a critical parent. It's coming from an inner bully. It's coming from your ego. This is not coming from spirit. This is not coming from the universe. This is not coming from God, from a loving parent. This is nasty. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with this routine. I was like, yeah, I know, but I really don't feel great. And I don't think it'd be smart to push myself. Well, you've got to push yourself because you've not really been on it lately and you've been eating like shit. So now you got to go. Thankfully, because I've done enough work on myself, I know to take contrary action and not listen to Susie. And I knew why she was loud. So if that inner critic of yours is really loud right now, it's because you have been expending so much energetically, mentally, physically, you're depleted. You're just depleted. That is a number one sign that you need to pour into yourself, nurture, get support, main, main sign. Big red flag waving warning. I was like, okay. I ca- I already kind of knew I was feeling this way, but I kept going because my big events next week. There's a lot to prep for that to make sure it's incredible. And then I'm launching the next round of my six month Project Me Mastermind experience. So I have that going on. And there's about 30 boxes, not exaggerating, that have not been opened that are down at the front door of all the stuff for the event clothes, props, gifts, you name it, that all have to be managed. It's just a, it's, it's a moderate shit show over here. And I, I'm just, I don't have any, any energy to do it. So I was like, okay, we're not going, we're not going to the gym. I just want to lay here. I was lying there. I was like, what can I do that make me feel better? So I started reading some daily readers, some daily devotional stuff. I then I was like, I could turn on a podcast. I was like, okay, can I at least get up and like brush my teeth and do my 52 step skincare regimen? I let Chubbs out, who's always a good time. And it's not like I felt better because I got up and I read these things and I was listening to podcasts. I really didn't feel better. I still felt like shit, but I kept putting one foot in front of the other. Then Susie comes back. Well, since you're not going to go do yoga, then you better get on top of it and get this done, get that done, do this, da, 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 da. Oh, my God. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's already beaten me down more. And if you're like, what the hell does this have to do with creating content for your business when your life is boring and you don't know what to say? Everything. Because this is what is underneath you believing or thinking you don't know what to say, you're boring, there's nothing to show, you're stuck. This is what's going on underneath all that. And that Susie was like, you've got stuff to post, you need to pre-record content because you're going to be preoccupied next week. And my brain went, oh my God, I just don't have it in me. I really don't have anything to say. I don't even want to have to think about what to say. I don't even want to have to think about ideas. And I love content creating. So there's another red flag that I'm depleted and need to pour into myself or that I'm having my depression has reared its ugly head because I have anxiety and depression I manage, where you aren't wanting to do things you normally love. I was like, okay, got it, got it, got it. 
I'm just going to, I kept saying it, I said it out loud, I'm just going to do the best I can and take the next step and do one step in front of the other. That's all I can do. Now, my depression wanted to pull me back into that bed and go, maybe I need more sleep. I can go lay back down. But I know if I leaned into that depression, if I leaned into that exercise addiction in order to quiet that mind, I leaned into that temporary relief of, fuck it, I'll go work out. At least Susie will shut up. Fuck it, I'll go lay back down. God, that sounds so nice right now. I mean, it sounds amazing right now as I'm talking to you. But it never ends well. It does not end well. It's a very quick temporary relief and it usually turns on you. It's kind of like when you go for food for comfort and initially it's, oh, this feels nice. And then then you're like up all night or you wake up the next morning feeling like crap. It's just not worth it. Uh, I need more coffee. I have to have a sip of coffee. I've, I'm not caffeinated. When I said real time, I wanted you guys to hear what this really looks like. I... This is, I get like this. This could go, I mean, I'm not trying to manifest it, but like I've had weeks where I've felt this way every day waking up. You don't have to be some extraordinary human being to have a successful business or to create an online business to make a shit ton of money. You don't have to have energy blowing out your ass. You don't have to be this highly well-connected extrovert. You don't have to be someone who's perfectly organized and has your shit together. If that was true, I would be broke. You don't have to be all those things. That's not true. That's some nasty voice in your head that's telling you that. But what you do have to do is show up regardless and get to a point And you have to work towards it. It doesn't happen in a snap of a fingers or after one meditation or a few therapy sessions. You have to get to a point where you know how you're showing up on any given day is enough. And that's exactly what the people need. And I'm on, I would love to stop and erase this recording right now because it's vulnerable to show up in real time. It's vulnerable and uncomfortable and awkward to show up when you don't really, your my brain isn't fully functioning. I'm not sure what to say. I don't feel I'm as witty or as sharp and maybe that's going to be annoying and you're not going to like the episode. If you're still listening to this, And you're liking hearing a refreshing real time where it's not like, I'm jet setting here and I have this sexy, incredible thing going on in my life and I have sunshine coming out of my ass and you can turn any day around. If you're appreciating hearing the, the real, the raw, the truth in real time, take a screenshot, share this episode, tag me at Project Me with Tiffany. And if you really want to make my day, and I damn mean this, leave a five-star written Apple podcast review. You can leave reviews on, on Spotify now too, or do both. I want to get to 600. That's a big deal. And it would really mean a lot to me. Those are things that help keep me going. I'll go read the reviews on all the days and unsexy times and down moments to help me remember why I show up regardless. Now, if you don't like it when I share in real time, that's okay. You can tell me that too. The reason I'm doing it is typically these episodes where I do this The feedback and the amount it helps you get out of your own way is incredible. And so I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to do it. Are you willing to show up as not your best self in order to help the greater good of your people? You might think, God, why would anyone hire me? I'm a mindset coach. I'm a lawyer. I'm a realtor. I do this, this, I'm a life coach. Why would someone hire me if they saw how messy I am? Why would they trust me with their money, with their issues? Why would someone think I knew what I was doing when I'm, when I'm a mess myself? Well, first of all, we're all a mess. I don't trust people who seemingly have it all together all the time. I don't buy from those people. I really don't. I don't buy from them. I don't trust it. I don't like it. 
I'm not seeing the full humanness of that person. We are so multifaceted that if you show up in your social media content and your digital content and all you're showing is you have your shit together all the time, everything, you're on it, all of this, you're, that, that's a form of putting a wall up. People aren't going to trust that. You might get a lot of likes, you might get views, you might get people saying you're inspiring, but you're not going to get people buying. All of the people I've hired from my wax therapist, (laughs) that's what I call her, who I'm seeing today, to my accountant, to my current coaches that I have. Yeah, it was nice. It's nice to see that they can afford to do great things. And it's nice to see, you know, when they are having a great day and that they have some interesting things going on in their life and they have testimonials. Yeah, that's all nice, but that's not what makes me hire them. What makes me not only hire them, but keep coming back and paying them month after month after month and referring people and shouting them out is them being raw and real and showing me what they do during their hard shit, showing me the stuff they're going through. My life coach, I've been working with now, what, 10 months, and I just signed on for another three months. And this is at a very big price tag. I feel safe. I hired her because I knew she would get me because she shared in real time going through a divorce and all of her side of the street stuff, not pointing the finger at her ex-husband, owning her part, navigating it, the good days, the bad days, the in-between days, the really tough stuff. And I was, so that didn't make me go, God, how can she help me when she's been a disaster for a couple months now? Because she's still showing up and doing the damn thing regardless and being honest about it. And it's beautiful. I, people want to hire someone who actually gets it. Someone who's real. Do do you want to be friends with a fake person? You're coming across as fake online and you don't mean to because you're, you're trying to hide stuff. It's like the junk drawer or the closet that has all the shit in it when company comes over. Why do we hide that? Who cares? I used to do that too. Well, I don't have that much company over, but I, I would tidy up. I think that's respectful and nice, and I want a nice environment for people. But I've got some piles. You know what? Fuck it. I've got piles. Who cares? So do you. They have piles too, and you know what it does? When I go to someone's house, now if it's, I'm very clean person, so if the shit's dirty, I'm not a fan. But if they've got piles, they've got some toys, right? There's some clutter here and there. You know what it makes me feel? It makes me feel more comfortable in their home because it's not so pristine. It's not so perfect. When I go to people's homes, it's super perfect. I'm like, oh my God, this per- I can't have this person over. They're going to think I'm disgusting. Wow, this person really has their shit together and I don't. <laughs> Show your mess. You don't know what to say. Your life is boring because you have the same routine. I'm I'm Virgo vibes over here. I love me a routine. It makes me feel very safe. I do change it up sometimes, but I do the same shit every day too, for the most part. This is why inside my two-month private business coaching program, we customize a profitable content plan for you. So you're not just posting random stuff up there. You're posting things that are real to your life that will connect with your ideal client that will make them eager and excited to buy from you because they like, know, and trust you and they see some of themselves in you. So you'll no longer be confused or torn on what to create, how to create it. We also create a customer acquisition strategy. So I teach you my techniques for getting consistent clients and cash online for any type of business. It doesn't matter if you have one follower, if you have an audience of 500,000 people. It doesn't matter. I coach both new entrepreneurs starting from scratch at zero to entrepreneurs who are already at seven figures looking to scale to multiple seven figures. That's why it's customized. I only take six private clients at a time. So I can absolutely pour into you. I only have a couple spots left for my summer session. If you want to apply for that, do not wait on it. 
it will be full very quickly. We're, I still have two application calls today and I have two more tomorrow. So swipe up. The link is in the show notes. You can go to the link in my bio on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany or on my website, projectmewithtiffany.com under work with me. And inside this container, you will no longer wonder how in the hell am I going to make money doing this thing and helping the people I want to help. You will no longer be wondering. Guessing is not a profitable business strategy. So you can continue wasting more time trying different things, trying to figure it out, watching other people, mimicking them, and then sitting there going, God, why is this working for them and not me? Because they're not you and you're not them. That one size all approach doesn't work very well. Now, some people it works okay with. That's why in group coaching, you'll have a lot of people have success. And then you'll have people where it didn't resonate with them because you can't customize it to each person. So if you've already done the course route, the group coaching route, or you already know you're someone who wants that undivided, customized attention plan and clear actions from me, then go do the damn thing for yourself or you're going to waste a lot more money and time by toe dipping around and messing around because I know you've already done that. So what do you post when you're like, God, Tiff, I, I, I feel you. I've been feeling so depleted like that lately too. And I just need to pour into myself and creating more content just feels like I'm pouring more out and I'm giving, 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 not receiving. And I don't have the mental bandwidth. You own it. Show it. You don't have to always, you don't have to always talk, but talking and video at the same time is the highest converting. So that's the second best thing to someone getting to know you in person, but show it. My routine is almost the same every day, unless I'm traveling or I've decided to do a major switch up or I've moved. So things have adjusted. If you, if it's, you get up, you brush your teeth, you wash your face, something with your kids, your dog, whatever, then you get your coffee and you, so what? It's the same thing every day then how can you make that more interesting? How can you show yourself drinking your coffee in a different space in your house? Can you have some kind of a morning message for them? Can you share what your current mood is and how you're mentally working through it? I mean, obviously it all depends on tying it back to your niche. But the best thing is, what is it that your ideal client needs to hear from you today? And if that's too hard for mentally because you're exhausted and you, you're overwhelmed, what would you like to hear today? Maybe the message is that you need to share is that you didn't know what in the hell to put out there. You couldn't come up with anything for content. You felt all this pressure to be profound. And you thought, you know what, I'm going to show up and share my energy and share my thoughts and not worry about if it's profound enough. What you're worried about is, is it enough? Is it enough for me, people to trust me? Is it enough for people to buy from me? Is it enough for it to go viral? So what you're really saying is you don't believe you're enough unless you're at your best or a version of your best. No, you're more than enough at any, any mood state of yours. You're enough. I know it feels like you're not because we've been programmed to believe that we're not. We've even had people in our lives tell us if we're not serving them or acting a certain way or being a certain way that we're a wet blanket, we're a downer, blah, blah, blah. well, fuck them. If you're getting something out of me being in real time today, me being in this mood where I'm a little bitchy, I'm a little edgy, I'm under caffeinated, I'm kind of venti and not in a venti coffee way. I need another sip, by the way. This is coming on in real time. You're not boring. You could put me in a padded room and I would come up with content for every single one of you listening. Why? You're the content. You're the face of your brand. Even if you don't have a personal brand, maybe you have an agency, you have a firm, You have a restaurant, but you're still one of the faces of your brand if you're a founder or a key investor in it. People want to connect with people, not with a logo. 
They want to see who are the people who make these necklaces? Who are who's the person who's going to be waxing my crack? <laughs> And in the coaching space, in the professional services space, I want to see you. I don't care if you're a doctor. I don't care if you're a psychiatrist and you come on and you share what you're struggling with. Oh, my God, I would, I would hire that psychiatrist immediately. I would feel safe with that person. They're real. They're vulnerable. I would really like that they, it would be really helpful for them to share how they work through their stuff as a mindset coach, as a therapist, as a psychiatrist. It'd be like a dermatologist or a skincare professional not wanting to come on because they sell skincare shit and they have a breakout. Well, you're still a human being. How about coming on and saying, it doesn't matter what lotions, potions, pills, what you take or how much you do with your skin or how clean you eat. Hormonally, you're still going to have breakouts. It's just going to happen. And here's what I do when I have a breakout. That's, what I, that's an example of learning in real time. Maybe you had some drama happen with a client. You don't need to share the name of the client, but you can kind of share the scenario. So share what happened with the drama with a client and how you worked through it. Or a problem in your business and how you worked through it. I share f- about failed launches on this show, and I teach you guys how to sell out your launches because not everything we touch turns to gold. That is the most preferred pieces of content I put out there, and what's appreciated by you is that I don't paint the picture that everything I touch turns to gold. I don't have the perfect Instagram husband. I don't have the perfect life. I don't have the perfect mindset, and that's okay, and I'm still worthy of making a shit ton of money and holding space, and helping you do the same. And that's what makes people go to apply. Guaranteed you're listening to this. If you were like, I'm really thinking about applying for Tiffany's two-month program. I'd love to work with her privately. I know I need help. Nothing's working. Guaranteed this episode has put you over the edge to go apply. Because you're like, you know what? She's going to keep it real. She's going to help me show up as truly as me, even though it's uncomfortable and get me to show up and be accountable and show up for the people and know how to frame it and format it so it actually connects and it actually converts. That's going to make you apply to work with me. Guaranteed there's going to be an influx of applications after this episode airs, without a doubt. Versus me doing an episode, I had another six-figure month. Not saying that isn't inspiring and beautiful to hear and hopeful, and I do share that stuff too, but if you, someone's only sharing that stuff, do not hire those people. Do not hire them. They're hiding something. Those people where they always seem, they're always happy and energized, and how are you? Life's great. It's grand. I'm blessed. Hashtag grateful. I'm sorry, those are not the people you go to when you're in a bad way. Those are the people that don't feel safe when you're in a bad way because they wouldn't get it because everything's perfect and they puree baby baby food for their children on top of running two companies and they only believe in cloth diapers and they don't use any chemicals in their home. Oh, and their husband, they worship their husband and they have sex every night. I would never tell that person my problems. I would never hire them. I'd never lean into them because that's not reality. Show your mess. Show your junk junk drawer. Leave a few piles out in your damn house. Show your janky ass couch. You want a new couch? Show the janky ass couch and that you're saving for a new couch. Say that no one signed up for your damn thing and you don't know why. You, what is the lesson in all these things? What's the lesson if you've had the last week your brain's been spinning and you teach people how to manage their ADHD or manage their anxiety and your brain's been spinning? Share the reality of that and the lesson in it and what you did to work through it and the grace you gave yourself through that. Use that as a lesson and show and tell. Show it. Show it in video what you're going through, what your day looks like when it's a bad day. Show your day what it looks like. What's a boring day? Almost kind of make fun of it. Show your boring life. 
Your boring life to someone else is their most exceptional life. Just remember that. Your life's boring because you're bored with yourself. You're only showing a few versions of yourself, not the full spectrum. So that is boring. You're bored with your life. And therefore, you're assuming other people will. Your life is new to me. I want to know, do you like runny eggs? Do you like your eggs over hard? Do you coffee or tea? What is your what is your guilty pleasure snack? I love knowing this about each and every one of you. It's not boring to me because it's not my life. It's always interesting. It's always intriguing. So it's not going to be boring to someone else because you're unique, you're different, and it's not them. You're just bored with your own damn life. So maybe you need maybe you need to mix some things up and become more interesting, okay? Leave me a five-star written Apple podcast review. You can leave reviews on Spotify too. If you love this real and raw episode, throw me a damn bone and let me know because this is vulnerable and awkward as hell for me to do. I'd really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 600 reviews. So go do it. Don't tell yourself you do it tomorrow or later because you won't. If you don't know how, you can simply Google how. The instructions come right up. It's really quick. It's really simple. It doesn't take much time and it goes a long way. Those are one of the things that I read through when I'm having struggle bus days like today where it reminds me how, why and how it's so important for me to put one foot in front of the other and show up regardless. I love reading your reviews. I appreciate them so much. Remember only two spots left for my summer session of my two-month private business coaching program. So go apply. We'll see if it's a great fit. That's why it's by application only. This is not a coaching call. So don't be applying unless you feel very strongly that you need clear guidance and clear action and a clear plan because you are not making the money or getting the clients or scaling at the level that you would like to. I work with both new entrepreneurs starting from scratch at zero all the way to people who are already in the seven figures to scale into the eight figures. So this is completely customized for where you're at. You don't need to be at a certain special magical place to work with me. You need to be exactly where you're at today. And then we look at where you want to go and we devise a very clear plan to get you there. And we start taking action and prioritize getting fresh cash in your business. Because without fresh cash flowing into your business consistently, what do we have? We've got a jobby on our hands, a time sucking, energy draining and expensive hobby. We do not have a business and I will not stand for that for you. All right. Wishing you great health, wealth and worth as always. Love you. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.